Welcome to the third case for the ExoCAD Insights training sessions. In this case we will design in two sessions telescopic crowns and a removable partial framework with secondary crowns on the telescopes. So in the first project we simply define the telescopes on, on the T's and here in this case as well we have on 221 we have also an implant and here we will define screw retained to design to directly design a telescope on the implant. We have also a pre-op model here and for the other T's we simply choose telescopic crown with pre-op, no implant, no gingiva or no virtual gingiva. We choose NP metal as material. Let's proceed to the design. In this first step we can correct the pre-op scan position because usually the pre-op model has been scanned uh, in a second session on a different position in the scanner and here for this case we have also a pre-op scan and we have to correct the placement. So I recommend to use the auto automatical uh, placement. Here we can do a three-point alignment. Usually I choose to do that on existing T's because that's the best reference and as we don't have here any other reference on this model I choose a significant area here on the papillas so this one then we can do the alignment and we can perform a best fit matching check the result here on the existing T's and as it is displayed in blue it, it's perfect. Then we go to the next step. Uh, we could start the virtual articulator now but we don't need that here in the first session for the telescopic crowns. Therefore I will skip this step and proceed to the next step. Yeah, here we have to detect the implant position and as it is written in the notes of the dental DB of the project, we choose here the DES NBBM pre milled RP and we perform the alignment and the best fit matching. Okay, great. Let's go to the next step. Yeah, here we have to define the emergence profile and this is a very important step for telescopic um, implant because I usually do the emergence profile here a little bit different than than for um, just custom abutments. We detect it with four points. And in the next step where I can design the emergence profile I do it a little bit different as I said already as for custom abutments. Yeah, the margin lines already had been saved before, so we can just apply them again and proceed. In this step we define the cement gap settings, so we use the correct material, so there's no need here to do more operations. Yeah, for telescopic crowns, that's the only case or the only job where I don't use any tooth placement because uh, I did many I did many telescopic crowns in a German lab in a German lab in the past, and um, usually you are, you just try to design them as thin as possible, and as long as you are not creating a kind of milled lingual. Um, or anatomical parts on your telescopic crowns, you really don't need to do any tooth placement here and therefore I simply skip this step 
and I don't invest no time here. Yeah, this is now very important. Um, the emergence profile for telescopes, as I already said, I do it a little bit different. Usually I go really below the emergence profile border with the emergence profile for aesthetical reasons. And I do the same here just on the buccal side. So therefore just add one here in the middle of the approximal side. And then on the buccal side I go slightly below the gingiva. Just verify from, from this direction. Okay. Great. And then on, then on the lingual side I usually go a little bit higher than the emergence profile border because uh, on telescopic crowns to create also kind of border which is a little bit higher and then we can create this border here already um, with the emergence profile. Yeah, we can do that like this. Okay. Now I define the shape of my emergence profile. Usually to do that very quickly I recommend just to use this button to create an entire convex shape like this and then I use the lower slider and I just create a concave area here at the implant platform. Yeah, that looks perfect like this. We can create a little bit more pressure here if we want. With shift you can move um, three points or oh, five points, sorry. And yeah, it's okay. Then we proceed to the next step. Yeah, freeforming, we also can skip this step as we don't need any anatomical information here to design our telescopes and even this step adapt to the pre-op scan can be skipped. Yes, this is a very important step, the telescope in certain direction. Here we have to define not only the insertion direction for the secondary crowns on the telescopes, but even more we have to define insertion of our removable later. And we have to find a compromise between the insertion for the removable and the insertion for the telescopes so that the the milled parts, the parallel parts of the telescopes are as thin as possible. For example, we should avoid an insertion like this because this would create here a much thicker telescope in this area. So therefore it's most important here on the buccal uh, dies, uh, on the anterior dies, to ensure that on the buccal side we have a very thin telescope. For example here it could also get a little bit bigger, but as this is on the distal side, it's not visible, so this is not a problem. So I would recommend, I think this insertion is already quite good. So just make sure that we here see the entire wall of, of the die. And then we check also here the insertion on the TC on these posteriors where we'll, where we'll design later a clasp on the partial. And I think that's that's quite okay like this. Set current view, then we proceed. Yeah, and now we will start with the design of the telescopic crowns. Yeah, you might need some practice to to design to quickly design telescopic crowns as there are so many features, so many buttons and options and I will try to show you uh, how I think can it, it can be done uh, very quickly. Yeah, let's start with the borders and I do, I start first with one crown and I simply adjust my borders here in a way that they are a little bit higher 
than my gingiva border. Some people don't create borders at all. They design them as thin as possible. I learned in my past that it's better to go <coughs> a little bit above the gingiva here uh, to make sure that in th at the insertion uh, of the secondary crown you will not hurt the gingiva. I also recommend always to remove to first remove the upper curve here on the occlusal area. You do that with control shift left and right because now we have those arrows here and it's much easier to place the dots at the correct placement. Okay. Then on the buccal side I usually try to do the border as thin as possible. And here as well, like this. Yeah. Then we go to the next one. Let's start with the other cement retained telescopic crowns. Then again on the buccal side, pull it down. Okay. Then let's go to the next one. Yeah, here we can pull it a little bit higher. Even on the buccal side. curve again. Yeah. And with shift I can move five points in one click. Remove this curve as well. Great. Check the buccal area. Okay, now let's do the same here on our um, Scuritan telescopic drone. Here I would recommend to remove this curve as well and to replace it by another curve which is just a two-point curve or let's say a line and with that you can easily design the core of your telescope. We can finalize that later. Now we just do the borders and as you see I don't need to create any border at all here because we created the border with the um, with the emergence profile. Otherwise we would have now a second edge here uh, on this border. Okay, we can even do it like this or move it completely down to make sure that we have here a correct shoulder. Okay, like this. That's great. Yeah, maybe you recognize now once I pulled down the points here on the border, the telescope got thicker and that's the problem. So uh, as we are always trying to do primary parts as thin as possible, you can see here that it's much thicker than the minimum thickness. This is because of, of the placement of my border. If I would go higher then I can go inwards and it gets much thinner. And this is how I also can do it like this. You could also create a second curve. Um, let's show it here. For example, 
with Control Shift and Left, you can add another curve. You can then define two uh, friction areas, and you could now move this one, the upper one, inwards and create it as thin as possible. And if you see, if I'm pulling this down at the end, this area will move outwards and will become thicker. Then I could create a kind of second area here and on the lingual side doesn't matter so here I can pull it down again completely down and like this and now you could even change here uh, the behavior of each uh, friction area so by default it's parallel to the insertion direction if you click here on these buttons you can adapt this area to the anatomical de design this is not needed at all now for this uh, case so you click again and this means now we have here a conical area and then you can create such such kind of conical transition between the border and your friction area. That's the other possibility to make them as thin as possible. Okay, let's do it again here on with the standard technique. Just move those parts inwards. You see this here is much easier, but in some cases the option with two friction areas can be uh, can have some advantages. Yeah, check always with some transparency with shift and the mouse wheel if they are as thin as possible here in the lower region. And then we start in the in the last stage. Oh, what's going on here? Let's just pull this a little bit outwards. Okay, great. So always try to create a nice transition between the border and the distal on the approximal area, uh, um, a transition between the border and the buccal area where there's no border at all. Yeah, now in the third stage we will start designing the cores of the telescopes and here I usually work very often with shift, so shift is moving three points here, control and shift is moving the entire curve. Yeah, and usually I try here on the buccal side to come down as much as possible because you need, especially on the buccal area, you need a very thin telescope to have much more space later for your acrylic. And usually, that's what I learned, is you say if you have about 2 millimeter friction area, this is enough, and sometimes even less. Um, what you should do is here on the approximal sides um, just keep a little bit more than two millimeters and I made the experience if you have two opposing sides which are a little bit higher then you will have a nice friction later even even if you would choose the hardest case you absolutely no friction area on the buccal side that would also be possible if you have two opposing uh, friction areas which are at about three millimeter yeah, but don't go, don't uh, place it lower than needed because you won't win any or you won't save any space here. So then you still can place it here. You can check with transparency or with the cut view tool. And yeah, that looks already quite good. Just correct this here. You see the difference here between this technique, the standard technique is here the transition between the lingual border and the buccal border. It still, it doesn't look perfect, so you, but you can do that later in the freeform step, step, whereas here you have a better transition or you have better control on the transition uh, of between the borders, between the buccal and the lingual borders. Okay. Let's do this one now. Okay, let's control and shift. Okay. 
here we can create a little bit more friction. Same here on this side. Okay, with we'll shift. You see always here uh, the height, so you see a lot of parameters here. You see the distance, which is here currently 2.31, and you see the angle, which is actually zero degree. So we are working with parallel telescopic rounds. Some labs are some dentists prefer to have conical with two degree for example. Yeah, that's how I would design the core of my telescopes and then at the end on each telescope I take control and shift and the left, left right, right mouse and I check again or I make sure that my telescope is as thin as possible with on such a blue arrow. You see that I can save, I can still save some space here. Okay. Yeah, now let's do the core of our screw retained telescopic crown. This is quickly done. Okay. And then the occlusal area, which can also be adjusted later in free form. I, I prefer to work a little bit more in free form here with the telescopic crowns. Yeah, and last but not least, you should also check your telescopic crowns with a pre-op. And here we will see that there's not a lot of space, so we can still move down here. Yeah, now we have a friction area of... I, I would not recommend to go below 1.5, this is really a limit from my experience. So with a compromise that then later the restoration will become a little bit thicker here, the lingual area, but that's not such a big problem. Okay, great. You could even if you want add such a such a control line on the other ones and if you want to quickly add some material in some occlusal areas but I usually try to do it as thin as possible therefore let's use the panic button the undo button okay Let's check again here just the buccal borders. This is the most important that they are as thin as possible. Okay, then we proceed to the next step, which is the freeform step. In this first freeform step, you have the advantage that you can only touch, or let's say that you cannot touch or destroy the friction area. And yeah, I will use this step just to finalize the occlusal area. I try, for example, to avoid here such concave edges and therefore I simply add some material here, just a little bit, and then I smooth again, not too much. Okay, let's do the same here. one as well. Okay, and last but not least also on our telescopic, uh, on our screw retained telescope. Okay.
Okay, then proceed to the next step. Yeah, screw hole design is not really required here, so therefore I will switch it off and I proceed to the last step. But here I always decide to go as well to the freeform restoration. And here I will do some fine tweaking and smoothing. Yeah. For example, I usually smooth slightly these edges here. I recommend here to use individual properties, the flat shading only, because then you can easily see if you destroy too much of your friction area. You can see it here on the triangles to see really which triangles stay untouched. Okay. I avoid these edges because, yeah, you might have problem if you mill the second parts because here on this shape there is no um, tool compensation and you have a much easier insertion later. Don't worry about the minimum thickness, it will be recomputed automatically. Okay, now let's finalize here these transition areas. Here I recommend to choose the point of, of a knife, choose a, a medium diameter and yeah, then you can also smooth these transition areas. If you touch here in this area, the friction area, I recommend to hold control while smoothing because this is a um, shape preserving smoothing and you avoid that you could create an undercut. You see that my parallel surface is not touched whereas if I don't hold control I can really create undercuts here. edges a little bit. Okay, and here again with control. This one looks looks good. Yeah, don't need to do anything here. maybe a little bit. Yes, and that's it. That's uh, we can maybe even remove this border here. Yeah, completely. I haven't seen this in the step before, but no problem, so I can still remove it here. Yes, that's it. That's how I design telescopic crowns or screw retained telescopic crowns. In the next session we will design the secondary bridge and the removable framework on these telescopic crowns. Thank you for watching.